Here he is, Chris Mack. So what do we talk about? A win for the Pirates. Yeah, that's great news. I mean, get off the six-game losing streak. You get Trevor Williams, who was a little bumpy in the first inning last night, fight through five innings, retired the last 12 guys he saw and looked pretty good doing it. Got a few strikeouts of some big hitters like Paul Goldschmidt. Um, so this is the kind of thing that can hopefully start to build some momentum in a positive direction as they come back home next week. Got to close it out, though, try and split the series against the D-backs today. All right, your expertise. Gene Collier in the Post-Gazette. Bob Dvorak brought up the fundamental aspect of this team, which has been lacking. So what happens, in your opinion, to a Major League Baseball team that is a Major League team that this stuff, for the most part, should be routine, and then the wheels fall off and you just can't get back on track? What happens? You know, it, it's, it's got to boil down to putting more work in. And, and the one guy that we see putting the most work in, at least that I see putting the most work in when I'm down at the ballpark, is Josh Bell. Young guy still trying to master first base, but he's out there every single afternoon around 3 o'clock. Clint Hurdle and Joey Cora hitting them ground balls at first base. And you know what? Josh Bell this year, we were really worried about him at first base. You know how many errors he has, Rob? One. So hard work. Um, I hate to boil it down to something so simple, but sometimes some good old-fashioned elbow grease get out there, work on your position, work on your craft. And, you know, some of these guys are playing multiple positions, so they only get that extra work in maybe once or twice a week in a given position. I asked Bruce Tanner this, and we'll close on this. By the way, 410 today, he and Jack Zorinzik and company, the whole team getting ready for the broadcast. First pitch, 410, Ivan Nova. Day off, then they come back to Pittsburgh. I want to ask you about, do you think the Pirates really – understood the significance of Gung not being in this lineup. They, they think Polanco could pick up the slack and Marte, and there's no way Andrew McCutcheon could have another bad year. Do you think they realize then, which I'm sure they do now, how much they miss him in this lineup? I don't think they anticipated him being gone this long, to be honest. I think they thought he would have been in the mix by now. I don't think anybody could have anticipated the visa issues that he's run into, and we'll find out soon, in the next few days actually, if his sentence will be changed for that DUI. May 18th, they're supposed to rule on that in a court over in South Korea. Uh, but, you know, Gregory Polanco has started slow. One home run to this point, he just got it the other day. Andrew McCutcheon hitting 211 coming into Sunday's ball game. So, if you're counting on those guys to bounce back from the second half, or Polanco's second half, McCutcheon's first half last year, and they don't do it, then yeah, you're certainly going to run into some offensive woes. Can they start to get you know, a rising tide to lift all boats here with Frazier and Freeze back. Lengthens the lineup a little bit instead of Francisco Cervelli, for example, hitting fifth. You got him at seventh. You know, those kind of things. Uh, that's what they've got to count on. The pitching has been there. They've just got to get the gloves right, and they've got to get the offense. Chris Mack and the whole crew today, 93-7, the fan, the Pirates, and Arizona Diamondbacks. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Good afternoon. Hi, Mom.